what is going on everybody um in this live we are going to do q a on cold approach and i'm going to show you guys a chart about how, how cold approach uh fits into my whole system okay so let's see here i'm just going to jump right into a screen share where we're going to look at my full system real quick. Some of you have seen this, it's a recap. But basically, we give guys sexual market value upgrades. This is new in the past year or so. So we pair you with a GQ stylist, a former GQ stylist who helps you maximize your wardrobe. We partnered with Snapper that can place a high quality portrait photographer in any English speaking city around the world. And Jay Vincent, handles our fitness stuff with our clients to give you an optimized fitness system to achieve your dream physique ASAP. Now, what we're doing this weekend, if you haven't heard on the daily lives and the different YouTube videos and TikTok and everything else, is I'm going to be teaching all of night game and day game, which we're referring to as the natural approach system, across two days with general mission and three days if you're VIP. So it's $27. I'm just going to put up a thing real quick. Um, it's only 27 bucks. Okay. So learn all of my cold approach live this Friday and Saturday. Seven bucks. Link in description. Okay. So I'm going to throw that up real quick. Now, this is just one little piece of the system. Like we zoom out here, right? The SMV stuff just helps you get better results in online game mainly. You get a slightly better reaction when you cold approach as well, but nothing significant. I've had lots of good looking clients over the past decade of coaching that are virgins or that are single digit lay count, even tall, good looking guys. Okay. Even tall, good looking guys that dress well <clears throat> because being good looking is going to help you get more matches on Tinder, of course, but then you can fuck it up with the Tinder messaging. You can fuck it up when you get the phone number with texting. You can fuck it up on the date. You can fuck it up on the clothes. You can fuck it up on the retention part. So I get good looking guys that go on dates that lead to nowhere or their phone numbers don't go anywhere because they suck at texting or their cold approach is they don't know how to keep the conversation going. The conversation falls flat. They don't know how to sexualize. So they get friend zoned. Okay. So what we teach or we help with the uh, sexual market value upgrades because that's going to help you get more matches overall on Tinder, Bumble, and Hinge. Okay, but the focus of the challenge this weekend is literally I'm teaching you everything I know. I can't stress that enough. Like for those of you that are fans of my channel or you know, I don't know how long, different people have been following me for different amounts of time. This is like comprehensive cold approach training. This is like everything you would learn on a live boot camp. Okay. And live boot camps cost several thousand dollars with us now. And because because of the best programs in the industry. But um, the difference here is you won't get me in person with you, but you get the next best thing. If you if you sign up for the VIP upgrade, which is another $97, which is still ultra cheap, then you get live real time support in telegram groups from me and my team of coaches. Okay. So and it's super fun. It's like because they'll be like, five different rooms based on time zone and i'm in all of them then i have one coach per room like you know where if you, if you have an interaction something goes wrong or you have a question you type it into the chat and we respond back like almost instantly so it's like you have a coach virtually there, able to answer questions and help guide you based on problems you run into but i just want to show you guys how this fits into the whole system right so this is cold approach is a lead acquisition tool mainly right because you're gonna be it's gonna deliver a lot of phone numbers but right i'm also going to show you how to pull which means taking girls home from night game and day game down straight back to the house okay so i will teach you like a lot of you on here have never pulled before you don't know how to pull i will teach you all the ins and outs of pulling like just rattling off the topics at random i'm going to teach you how to open how to never run out of things to say 
what to talk about, how to move things forward, how to deal with the friends in the group, how to isolate her from the friends in the group, how to physically escalate, how to sexualize your verbals, how to demonstrate higher value, how to lead, uh, how to de how to ask logistical questions, how to seed the poll, which means planting the idea that two of you are going to go home later, how to answer the 14 major objections. I can't leave my friends. We just got here. I can't go unless she comes. How to know you're not a serial killer. Uh, I just met you. We just got here. We have to stay till the end. How will I get home? I'm not that kind of girl. Those are the major ones you're going to hear. I'm going to teach you. I've tested responding to all them because I've heard them tons of times and I've come up with the optimal responses to each one. So you'll be learning the optimal responses to objection answers. You'll be learning um, everything, right? How to baby step pulling. What are the adaptations to make during day game? How do you stop a girl that's moving during the daytime? How do you stop a girl that's on her phone or on her headphones? Anything and everything will be covered, okay, across two days. we, work, we Our team works very hard on getting all the presentation materials together, getting all the flow charts together, um, we have a bunch of guest speakers. Ross Jeffries will be guest speaking. Jay Vincent, who handles our fitness stuff, will be guest speaking. Kristen, who handles our uh, fashion and style stuff, will be speaking. Uh, we have another guest or two. I think that that's going to be a surprise. But the amount of value for 27 bucks, right? In full disclosure, look at it from our point of view, right? Like here's our eight week program, and that teaches you. The SMV upgrades, it teaches you online game, Tinder messaging, text messaging, uh, public date running, how to close once she's back home, how to keep the ones you want, and also all of Cold Approach. But we're trying to blow you away in this dimension and teach you literally the entirety of Cold Approach such that you'll want to be trained on the rest of this. Now, some people will come on and they'll get all this extreme value for 27 bucks, and they won't sign up to learn the rest of this. That's totally fine but a lot will. We had a couple thousand guys on the last challenge. When guys are pulling for the first time in their life, after they've you know, studied this stuff or tried with a bunch of other companies, a whole great deal, or they are collecting 10 phone numbers or 15 phone numbers in the night, getting makeouts, you know, getting success with girls that they thought were out of their league, you're going to be having a lot of huge breakthroughs because I, I, I know this stuff inside out and I've designed my system to work extremely quickly and effectively, like literally out of the gate. So even if you guys have never pulled before, even if you're a virgin, even if you're, you know, even if you're advanced, I will fill in a fuck ton of gaps in terms of what's missing. And you will have the optimal set of moves from start to finish, everything regarding cold approach. So just to show you guys and leave your question, leave all your questions on cold approach in the chat. I will get to those in a moment. Um, yeah, just keep, keep leaving your questions. I'll get to those shortly. So here's the fucking pet peeve is typos. So here's uh, the differences between the general admission, which is 27. And again, like th these prices are like dirt cheap, right? Like I would sign up for something like this personally. If there was a guy anywhere close to my level, I would go on and see what I could learn, right? Because I'm teaching my full cold approach system start to finish. But 27 bucks, additional 97 here. Let me just go over the differences, okay? Because a lot of people were asking us, what's the difference between general admission and VIP? So in general admission, you get access to the two-day live event. It's this Friday and Saturday of this week, January 20th, 21st. You get an approach breakthrough training manual, access to our wingman network, which is a Facebook group, and 30 days access to live trainings, right? So you'll, for 27 bucks, you're getting my life's work of cold approach training. Pretty good deal. Now for an additional $97, you get all the day game training from Occam's Razor plus 30 day game infields. You get additional Q&A and hot seats daily and you get a full extra day of live coaching with me on the Sunday. Then I think this is the most important piece uh, besides the lifetime access to recordings. You get live telegram support with me and my coaches while you're out doing approaches. Okay, people that sign up for general admission, you're still welcome to go out on Friday and Saturday. It's highly encouraged, obviously. But when you run into problems, you won't have anybody to ask questions to. So that $97 gives you access to me and the other coaches. It also gives you access to 30 day game infields and full day game training. It also gives you a full extra day. Any one of those things is worth an additional $97 or lifetime access to all the training. So I highly recommend the VIP. And 
this is one last thing before we go into Q&A. This is basically the structure of the event. 5 p.m. Eastern, training starts on day one, which is this Friday. I will cover, you know, basically what happens before the approach, what your mindset should be, how to gain attraction, how to close, what to do after the approach. And I'll be giving like my speech about, you know, what I normally teach before live boot camps. Then there'll be Q&A and hot seats with VIP. And then you will go out to the clubs and try to implement this shit. Okay. Um, and then for VIP, you'll get telegram support from the coach and me. Day two, Saturday, this Saturday. Okay. We'll go over people's different wins and recaps. We'll go over different problems guys are running into the major problems and how to solve them. We'll go into advanced day game and night game. Um, well, you know, the fundamentals of day game, then we'll go into more advanced concepts for both day game and night game, advanced mindset stuff, more secret sauce type stuff. And this is missing the guest speakers too. We'll, we'll also have multiple guest speakers, then Q and a, and what it means by hot seat is not RSD's hot seat where we have, we will be doing infield breakdowns as well. But, um, what this means by hot seats is we'll basically like put someone on a spotlight on zoom and they can interact with me directly. So if you sign up for VIP, you'll be able to interact with me directly and you know, camera to camera, and we'll we'll go through some of your most important questions. Um, then at night, you're gonna go out again, try to pull, try to get numbers, and the VIPs will have access to coaches in the telegrams. Then day three, that's for VIP only, people that paid the 97 extra, and there'll be more Q&A, more value, more success stories, et cetera. Okay. And let's see. Yeah, this is just kind of a big outline of, of my teachings. So, all right, let's jump into questions. And again, it's literally $27. Like it's, it's a joke. I know we've ran a couple of these already. So some of you might be thinking like, Oh, I already joined one of the last one. If you join on the last ones, you know how valuable this is. We've changed it up. You know, it's not going to be the exact same thing for those of you that have come on before. We've changed it up to present in different ways. We've made it more effective, more efficient. We're always iterating, you know, making the, the value of what we're putting out even better. We have more guest speakers, different ones than the last the last times. So it's still worth joining again. It's also, st I still highly recommend joining if you own my products. It's still going to, you know, help you a great deal. And again, at $27, I don't know, we've had lots of, I had one guy ask me like 10 different questions that, before he would like, commit to spending $27. I mean, you know, if you go out, like if you go out in like Vegas or Miami or New York, like a drink is like $20, right? So if you get like, or like the covers is like 50 or a hundred sometimes, you know, $27 is like less than like a, like a date or like a meal out. So, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty fucking dirt cheap. We, we had the last one free, but you know, we get people on that aren't serious. So for $27, that gets rid of people that are like are, are, you know, fucking around and stuff like that. So that's that. Let's jump into some questions. Um, let's see. I need to block the fucking light on this sign here behind me. I'm excited to get up earlier too. I already, normally I fucking stay up late every night and sleep all morning. But um, we got up early this morning. I already fucking... It's like 11.50 a.m. in Brazil. We already did a full gym workout, went out for breakfast, got my weekly testosterone injection, made a YouTube video, now doing YouTube Live. And after the, and now Liz is getting ready. We're going to make a bunch of TikToks after this. Um, okay. So it's fucking good to be productive. Um, I've got two new hot chicks set for tonight, which is very exciting. Okay, uh, let's see. Cognitive enhancement recommendations, otherwise known as uh, nootropics. There's, so I really like the, this is just like a stress supplement, right? But this isn't a nootropic. But this brand Now Foods, they had something called True Focus, which, let me look it up real quick. Um, it was a good combination of stuff. So, yeah, here it is. I'll link this in the chat. But this basically has, let's see. I'm trying to fucking zoom in. Okay. 
this has I don't even fucking read DMAE ginkgo biloba um L I can't even read the fucking shit the, the, the image is too small but this has a whole bunch of shit to help your focus and and thinking um I'll put this in the chat now foods true focus also if you called um if you take vimpocetine and milligrams the vasodilator which expands the blood vessels in your brain it helps prevent strokes and it also just fuck my fucking you know grandpa on my on my dad's side it's the only relative i've lost he died of a stroke i was telling everyone for years take vimpocetine it's, it's widely used in europe to prevent strokes and he fucking had a stroke but you know that that was also the fault of the doctors they gave him some experimental drug where they had to take him off his blood thinners and then he fucking got a stroke almost immediately um but then you know it sucks it sucks people fucking dying from ignorance um then postatine increases short-term memory 30 percent, like almost immediately because there's more oxygen and glucose going through your brain so i would and it also like cures tinnitus if you have <laughs> like an encyclopedia about supplements but basically um look up that true focus thing that's a good place to start and let's do research on nootropics like i've read whole books on it there's all different ones for different types of things and there's um peptides as well that can help with shit. um okay let's see if someone's social anxiety has their teeth chattering, you have trouble speaking, interaction, feel your heart, heart is pounding and blood is flowing. Is that similar to your levels of social anxiety? In the past, yes. I was talking to, with Liz about this last night. We were like in the fucking hot tub and I was telling her like, um, I used to get panic attacks daily. Okay, if anybody's had a panic attack, it feels like you like need to go to the hospital or like you're gonna fucking die. A lot of people don't can't relate to it but your body is like thinking that you're in like a scenario where like you literally are going to have to fight or or die um <laughs> so or run or whatever so you know social anxiety is a very real thing i still even though you know i drinking was a, a problem for me eventually and i and i had to quit i still recommend if you can drink responsibly two or three drinks will help tremendously or there are there are alternatives such as kava or phenobut. I I now take phenobut when I go to cold. I can do cold approach sober no problem. It's just better with phenobut. It was better with alcohol, right? It's still extremely extremely good without. But why not have an advantage, right? So, um, if you're like crippled, and you know as it sounds like, I would have a few drinks, have phenobut, you know look into anxiety medicines with the doctor i take a fexer um let's see if the court deems andrew tate is not guilty will you believe he's actually innocent um that's a that's a you know that's that's kind of a tough question because i've heard about a lot of a lot of stuff from very reliable sources that's already extremely fucked so i don't like the guy i know that's not a popular opinion everyone wants to fucking suck his dick and you know ride on his coattails and and take everything he says is true and stuff like that i personally think he's a master manipulator i think he's extremely incongruent with the fake alpha try hard bullshit he's constantly posturing and positioning about i think he's just an extreme uh you know megalomaniac and thinks he's like the most important guy in the world and you know i i think the justice system is deeply flawed as well you know not to say let's let's see what happens right who knows what will happen but i've just heard a lot of really bad shit and you know stuff has come out like damning stuff that's not any any he said she said like the the leaked wiretap if that's legitimate he's admitting to laundering money you know like regardless of anyone's opinion about him that's pretty fucking damning and, and looks pretty bad um 
and there's other stuff like that. So, you know, it's it's basically like, if, even if the court finds him innocent, right? Like there's like hard evidence against him. So first of all, I don't think the court will find him in, innocent. But second of all, you can't deny hard facts unless you take an extreme skeptical position that it was fabricated. You know, people are saying like his audio note where he's saying that he liked raping a girl allegedly is a deep fake. Okay, maybe. You know, maybe maybe we're in the matrix, as he says, you know. But again, without resorting to extreme skepticism, he was incriminating himself all over the place online, on, on social media, admitting to all kinds of terrible stuff. And behind the scenes, I've heard a, a fuck ton more. So again, it, it did not look good for him even before he got in trouble in my eyes. And now it looks a lot worse, but time will tell, right? For all the all the like super supporters, maybe he will be vindicated. Who knows, right? I don't like the guy. I think he's a bad influence either way. Whether or not he gets you know convicted of any criminal charges, I still think he's a terrible influence either way and a terrible person. That's just my opinion. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Chinese Mike. <laughs> so what they're referring... <laughs> this industry is so dumb. So what they're referring to by Bond is David Campbell, who changed his name to Mark. I can't say the full name. He's going to put a privacy strike on it. But think of a tire brand that has the word fire in it. Uh yeah Th these guys are just both fucking mega tryhards mike squat and casanova got kicked off youtube and all other platforms because he was like airing like sexual acts online like a dumbass or like students hooking up and shit with hidden cameras which is illegal he was also giving students uh illegal drugs on the program that's a fact David Bond is just a little retard that runs around with a GoPro and got fully decimated in the live that I did with Bradicus. Bradicus was his former roommate and said that his cold approach, David Bond's cold approach is like a two and a half out of 10. He's paying girls Bitcoin cash. He's just setting up, you know, like bullshit lifestyle shoots to say, oh, I got these girls from social circle. And it's really just girls he recruited with Bitcoin cash. Two mega losers. Anyone that pays those guys, I feel sorry for them. I've talked to guys that have gone through that program. It's a total waste of time. They ripped off uh, the other guy, Patrick Red, in the space, who took a bunch of stuff from RSD Luke, who also had a shitty program. I don't like these like fucking social circle programs. They're mostly a joke. Like they sound good in theory, but like all the guys pushing that are just like faking it. Like Max Tornov was pushing that shit in Ukraine, and I exposed, you know, these guys fucking hate me. But I expose what's really going on. He was just hiring girls in Ukraine, promising them a better life, paying them, first of all, and promising them a better life in Germany or Austria. And uh, like it came from like an inside source, like a girl that was hired <laughs> by Max, right? Jason Capital was shown to be putting up Craigslist ads. Hey, girls needed for lifestyle shoot. They literally pay hot girls to be in these shoots with them. And then they get guys to pay for courses on social circle game because they're touting it as if they got those girls through social circle game. You see the problem? Yes. Now you see the problem. Worse yet, David Bond and Squat and Casanova are just two fucking huge dorks. Okay. Squat and Casanova said like in 2013, he isn't even like talking to girls. He just like, he likes playing video games a lot, just like Max. It's like two fucking video game nerds that also go and hire girls to be in shoots and then be like, look, we got these from social circle. Yeah. Very sad. But again, that's the whole industry is like that. Um, your conversation with Jeff was very cool. Are you talking about Jeffy and, and from when, or, you know, what are you referring to? Uh, let's see. If your only lead source were co was college classes, how would you run those interactions? You basically want to talk to the girl before or after class, right? Like you're not going to game her like during the lecture. So wait for her after class and talk to her or talk to her when she's arriving in class. It's better afterwards because then there's no like time constraint. Um, and no, like it's not that big of a deal if it, do if it doesn't go well because... 
who gives a shit, right? And you can come in like semi indirect. Don't come in full indirect, but you can be like, oh, what do you think of that fucking teacher? Like he's annoying, right? Oh yeah, he's the worst. I'm John. What's your name? Blah blah. blah. Oh cool. What part of the campus do you live on, right? Oh, we should get, get a coffee sometime. Literally, that's simple. And if she's like, no, I have a boyfriend. It's not like you're blackballed from everyone in college now, right? Or if she's like, no, I'm not interested. It's not like words going to spread that, you know, don't fucking worry about that shit. As long as you're not like spam approaching every single girl that leaves the class, right? You're not, it's not going to be that big of a deal. This is a dumb question. <laughs> I like whenever there's like fruits or whatever, I, I just like do juggling tricks and people are like, oh my God. Um, no, no, I do not. I think the U S has gone extremely downhill and across most dimensions. I think that from my experiences living around the world, the girls are a lot fatter in the U S they're a lot, you know, more towards the direction of being masculine, traditional, like feminine masculine roles have lost their place. And there's a lot of like blurring. It's even gone in the other direction. A lot of men in the U S act like giant pussies. A lot of women are acting like men and that's sad. And I, I also think that people are much more focused in the US. And you know, for those of you living in the US that have never been outside the US, you probably can't relate to this. But a huge difference I've noticed, and that I've spoken extensively with lots of other people that have traveled a lot, is that a lot of people in the US are just focused on acquiring possessions. They're comparing, you know, oh, uh, what does my house look like compared to my friends compared to my neighbors? What is my car like compared to this compared to that? And a lot of people are self absorbed and wrapped up in materialism and you know big pharma and, and these kinds of things are fucking against people they profit off people being sick like the, you know the, the fda is corrupt the, the the food pyramid guidelines for americans with fucking white bread and white pasta is the, the major thing you should be eating it's literally the opposite of what's true glycemic index look up glycemic index and and what happens when you're consistently spiking blood sugar and activating a big insulin response it leads to type 2 diabetes and metabolic syndrome but i think there's like a big problem with chronic inflammation if you look at like the amount of like mental health problems and the amount of just general health problems in the us it's fucking horrible um what i noticed like england was the first country because I, I did my second masters in england and what i noticed immediately like when i was living in england is that like a lot of people in other countries value social interactions like the most and I don't mean like fucking cold approaching and shit like time with friends like simple things little things things that don't cost money things you can't put a price on like I had a group of friends in England that comprised of people from like Germany France Saudi Arabia Greece um you know all over the place I don't remember all the different countries but it was like a, a mix of all these different people from all over every night hey we're going to this restaurant hey we're going to this bar People had to work in the morning. They'd, you know, go in, go home by 10 or 11. Other people would stay out and go to the clubs. And also just being out at pubs and stuff in England, like people would like just start up conversations with me at the next table. Hey, mate, hey, what are you up to tonight? Oh, come, come chill with me, meet my boys. Like, and you sit and then there are these guys like your close friends and they're like sticking up for you and shit. And, it, and that was just like so refreshing because I feel like a lot of people in the US are fake. I feel like, I know that a lot of people in the U.S. are fake. A lot of people are they're, they're nice and friendly to you, and they talk shit on you the moment you walk out of the door. It's not like that in a lot of other places. I mean, human nature is human nature, but I just feel, especially the women, like the women are just more genuine. Like when you approach a nine in Brazil or like Poland or whatever, they're receptive. They're they they'll have a conversation with you. There's not all this like fronting and like you know, oh, we're too good for you and all this stuff kind of shit that you'll run into a lot more in the U.S. There's a lot less cunty behavior in other parts of the world. So, you know, I didn't move to Brazil because it's easy mode or anything like that, which is definitely not like I have friends that have come here and not got laid for months. You need game here. And that's been confirmed by lots of other guys, including Bradicus and, and guys like James Tusk. Um, <laughs> I was thinking about, you know, speaking of vice, I was, I was thinking about feeding them like real dirt on people, like objective evidence on people and having them push, you know, like real stories, like, like real bad shit about people because my exposed stuff has limits. 
And I'd like a lot of these people to get lit up hardcore in the mainstream news. Um, <laughs> advice filming. Challenge Tate. A little difficult. He's in jail right now. Um, all right. There's a lot of questions here. Let me just start plowing through rapid fire. <clears throat> Let's see. <laughs> Chinese Mike. <laughs> Yeah, a perfect example of a guy that should not be coaching. Um, I only know Florianopolis in Brazil. Florianopolis has arguably the hottest girls in the world. Um, I'm going to probably go back there at some point. We're gonna, I think we're going to be there for Carnival um, in Brazil, which is in February. On February 7th, I'll have been in Brazil three years already. But you got to be careful. There, there's parts that are dangerous. Right. Brazil gets a, a big rep of being super dangerous. I've never had even one incident here in three years. But again, like, you know, you got to stay out of like the poor areas and, and, the, and the, you know, dangerous areas and stuff like that and be smart on the street at night and stuff. But, um, uh, you know, I've only, I only know Sao Paulo and Florianopolis. I haven't really, we went to Porto Alegre in the south, but I was here through COVID for like the first two years. So most stuff was closed. But we're going to take trips to Rio um, and, and some other cities. We had a trip planned for uh, – we were supposed to go – me and Liz were supposed to go with another couple um, to this, like, beach resort in the north. But we, something came up, and we didn't go there. But, I mean, it's pretty cool. I, I love this country. It's, like, my favorite country I've lived in. Um, the girls are just super hot, like – it's going to be hard for me to ever go anywhere else after this. I'll probably be in Brazil a long time. Um, it's insane. Like I can't, I can't describe it's, it's like another planet. Like the girls are just super hot, super cool. Um, let's see. And, and like a lot of the girls I have in rotation now are like in love or like, you know, blowing up my phone all the time. I had to close the messenger cause there's fucking all these messages all the time, but it's awesome. It's, it's like, I don't know. It's hard to describe. Imagine walking up to a nine and and the girls just being very, very receptive and wanting to talk to you and, you know, not putting up a lot of shit. And there's nines everywhere. Um, let's see. If you set a date with a girl in your class and you still see her while going out of class before the day of the date, you know, just say what's up. Make small talk if, if you want to. It's not a big deal. Don't do anything like as a, like a big deal because you could blow out the date that's already set up you want to try to keep like a minimalist approach right like once you have a date set with a girl like don't fucking be texting back and forth all week i've seen this happen with clients many times the date is set and then they like you know try to send memes or they try to like have another conversation or maybe they try to like sexualize or whatever and they end up fucking it up and the girl ghosts and then they blew the date out a date is like almost like a layup you should be closing most of them like 75 80 percent so once you have the date set up, keep everything like pretty minimal after that. Um, yeah, I can ask her that. Liz! <laughs> She's getting ready for TikToks. But yeah, I mean, who fucking cares, right? Like, if she's not interested, she's not interested, who fucking cares? Um, let's see. Oh, here we go. We got we got a little fucking dork in the chat. You're just a rich, tall guy. No more. I was broke for a lot of my life. Some of the best periods in the game where I was crushing, I, I was like flat broke. And I've had clients that were flat broke that crushed as well. I've also had lots of clients that were tall and even muscular that were virgins or single digit late comps. So you don't know shit. Um, no, they did not. Um, let's see. How many supplements can you take per day? I take like over a hundred pills. Ray Kurzweil spends a million dollars a year on supplements. There's no limit. You, you guys have to understand supplements are just things that are found in food. <laughs> so, you know, there's no, there's something called tolerable upper limit. I talk about this in my supplement paper that I put out in that one YouTube video. You don't want to take over the tolerable upper limit because it could have an adverse effect or it could be, could induce toxicity. But for things like vitamin C, there is no tolerable upper limit because it's water soluble. So, you just have to know what the to the tolerable upper limit is and what the optimal amount is, which is far different than the RDA, the recommended daily allowance set forth by the FDA. Like the RDA amount for vitamin C, for instance, is something like 70 milligrams or maybe 90, but it's like extremely low. 
So when you see 100% vitamin C on a, on a package, that's bullshit. That's just to prevent acute scurvy, um, which is what people got on ships, like when there was a like lack of, you know, vitamin C. Um, we used to produce our own vitamin C endogenously, and then there was a mutation, which directly led to us starting to get heart disease. Only four species get heart disease. Babe, Liz, come here for a sec. Um, the only species that get heart disease are humans, orangutans, fruit bats, and guinea pigs. And they're the only four that don't produce their own vitamin C. That's a whole separate topic. But uh, Linus Pauling, who won two Nobel Prizes in different fields, calculated that based on the amount of vitamin C that the other mammals produce based on their body weight, the ratio, humans need about 2,300 milligrams a day for optimal health. And the problem is complicated based on the fact that maximum blood, blood plasma concentration of vitamin C is 750 milligrams and the half-life of vitamin C is 30 minutes. So if you take 1,000 milligrams in a supplement, 30 minutes later, it's down to 500. Come here for a sec. Um, but yeah, you can take a fuck ton. Ray Kurzweil hired a guy. Yes, <laughs> she's like me. No, the maid. What? Yeah. Your boobs look good enough. She didn't put her makeup on yet. Um, okay. Show, your, show your, your hard nips on the stream. Someone's asking. Um, she's not wearing makeup yet. But yeah. let's see. Someone asked Liz, how long does it take for a woman to forget about a cold approach from a guy she's not interested in? Thirty seconds. Sometimes you're like, oh, okay. It's like um, like a wind, you know. When the wind comes, it's like, oh, it's this re this re eruptive, and yeah. then you forget about. Because the wind is like no significance. When it's not like something that you're like, oh, you pay the attention. It's like it doesn't matter. So okay, go put on clothes. Right. Thanks. Yeah, who gives like you guys shouldn't be fucking thinking about that, right? If the girl's not interested, she's not interested. Who cares how long she's thinking about you for? So it's irrelevant at that point. Um, let's see. I think instant dates are are kind of dumb. I teach guys how to do it, but here's my view on instant dates. If you have a girl that is available, like let's okay. So when you after you open a day game, hey, I wanted to meet you real quick, or or very often I use an appearance opener. Hey, I really like that tattoo you have. Hey, I really like that bag. Where'd you get it? Hey, I like that outfit. Oh, I like your hair like that. And then introduce yourself. Then the very next question is, what are you up to right now? You want to know that logistical question because a lot of girls are in a hurry during the daytime, especially if it's a moving set, which means a girl that's walking. Now, if she's available, you can suggest that you guys go to your place after you chit chat for, for you know, three, three to five minutes. You can try to pull. If she's busy, then you're going to number and meet her later. Now, here's the problem with an instant date. It's like this fucking middle ground no man's land where you just like wasted a bunch of time just to get another date. Now, this could be okay in some cases, I guess, if you're like super newbie and it's like going to be a weak number and you want to firm up the, the strength of the number and the odds of her going to meet you on an actual date by doing the instant date. But you know, or or if you're gonna if you're gonna try to pull from the instant date, right? You can do the coffee and then try to pull from there. But in general, a lot of instant dates just kill like thirty to forty five minutes, and then at the end of it, she's like, "All right, well, you know, nice meeting you." And then like now, you still have to go and do another date. So to me, it's like a waste of time. Um, but you know, to each their own. I, I have infield footage of doing an instant date and then pulling, whatever. But it's better to just pull instead of like, I'm not a fan of like bouncing either. So like that means taking a girl from the bar to like a diner or a bar to another bar. Don't do that shit. That's what Todd does. I, I literally was assisting Todd on a boot camp in New York city in 2012. And he got a girl to leave Barnes and Noble with him and go to whole foods. Then he got her to go from whole foods to a restaurant. And me and the student pulled one of the students, we pulled from whole foods and instead of going into the restaurant, I was like, let's go back to this girl's hotel. And so we left to go to the girl's hotel. And Todd was like at the restaurant with the girl. And then he brought her. Oh, and then and then after that, like, like we hooked up with the chick that we brought back to the hotel. And then Todd was like, I'm going to go home and change my shoes for the club. And I'm like, all right, bring this fucking girl in close. And he went and changed his shoes. And then he came and met up with me. And I was like, I got the students. He came and met up with me and the students. And I'm like, did you close? And he's like, no. 
she waited outside the door while I changed my shoes. And I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? And then he paid her cover like $20 to get into Webster Hall in New York City, which is now closed. And the girl like ditched him in the club. And I was like, what the, like, I'm like, you wanted to close that, right? He's like, yeah. Like he did like four bounces and then didn't close. And, and also like bought her dinner and, and the club cover. Okay. <laughs> that, that's Todd for you. So <laughs> he also would get stuck in these like four or five hour LMR battles. Like in DC, he's like, can I use your hotel room? I like pulled this blonde cheerleader, fucking railed her brains out. He had a girl that wanted to pull after the program, brought her to the hotel. I mean, this was the next day, but he basically was in my hotel room for like five hours and couldn't close. And I heard this from a bunch of other people too. Like he would, he would stay at people's houses and like not close. He would have these like all night, you know, LMR attempt breaking sessions and fail. It's like, what a fucking dumbass. <laughs> um, all right, <laughs> let's keep going. Um, will it make JAL consider a change of life in a different country? I don't know what that's referencing. Um, let's see. No, I mean, I like nothing's going to beat your libido as like a teenager. Like if anybody remembers and it sucks because that's when your game's the worst, right? It's, it's all fucking backwards. Like I was like ultra shy, ultra anxious, tons of anxiety problems and shit. Um, I'm going to put this up on the bottom, by the way, it's annoying, but, um, Oops, let me fucking just put this as an annoying thing down here. This starts Friday, guys. Um, let's see. Thanks. Yeah, I got to move a little quicker. There's a lot of questions here. Um, I did a full live reaction when they put that documentary out. Um whatever day that was I fucking remember last Thursday night or no it was it was like yeah it was like last Thursday night or something late and I deleted the stream right after it got like 1.5 k views but it was like behind a paywall so I didn't want to get a copyright violation on the channel I was like reacting to some other youtuber who was streaming it from behind a paywall so I might have been protected because I was reacting to another youtuber but it was technically like behind a paywall on like Hulu live or whatever so I deleted it but my thoughts are it doesn't look good okay that that it, whatever opinion i have personally it just does not look good from an objective standpoint wiretaps that they released if they're legitimate say show him admitting to laundering money audio notes if they're legitimate and not a deep fake which it came from the girl's phone um and it's it's his fucking voice he's saying that like he loved raping the girl so he's like incriminating himself with hard evidence. So regardless of the fact that Vice is a hit piece shithole news outlet, the fact that there's hard evidence in the form of voice notes, in the form of released wiretap shit, and even him incriminating himself in, on Twitter and, and other places from past posts, which he deleted, does not put him in a good spot. And it also shed light on the fact that girls have reported him for rape in 2013 and 2015, and now again in 2021. Those are all facts. None of those are my opinions. People don't like hearing those things, but those are all facts. Okay. So who knows what will happen? I don't like those guys personally. You're welcome to, to be huge mega fans. Um, I know stuff from behind the scenes that comes from reliable sources that makes me not want to have anything to do with those guys. It makes me want to stick up for people, you know, people that are getting uh brought under their call influence i think they're doing a lot of bad in the world to be honest masquerading is as doing a lot of good right like the, the message is like they're freeing men and giving men a voice no what's really happening is they're corrupting a lot of men on a massive scale to hate women or, or be against women or disrespect women implicitly without which i think is is a terrible thing for the world um and just sets everybody back a great deal so you know time will tell we can all speculate all day long, but it, it does not look good for them. I, and I, I personally think they're going to serve time, in my view. Um, he stands by the fact that there's zero evidence. doesn't look like there's zero evidence. <laughs> and his lawyer hasn't even been shown the fucking criminal investigation yet. From what they've put out public, it looks very bad. And I'm sure they have a lot more behind the scenes that we don't know about. So in my view, he will. 
I'm anticipating he will serve time in it. And, you know, we'll, 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 time will tell. We'll see. Um, but, yeah, I mean, nothing compares to libido when you were, like, in middle school and high school. Like, I remember seeing, like, hot fucking girls in, in middle school and high school and just being, like, holy fuck. Like, just popping instant boners in class, you know, like, thinking about sex 24-7, all that shit. Um, we're not meant biologically to live much past, you know, like 20 something or even like 30 max. So it's no surprise that testosterone and, and sex hormones start to fall off a cliff, but you try to combat those things, right? I take, uh, tribulus. I take horny goat weed. I take Tomcat Ali and I take maca. This is the main one. If you're going to take anything, take this. You can buy it at natural food stores, GNC, uh, vitamin shop, or online. And that's going to really, it's going to help raise your libido. And obviously having proper testosterone levels, you know, puts you in a better, but no, no nothing compares to like when you were like a fucking teen with like, you know, new hormones and, and fucking going through puberty and shit. I think that was probably the horniest I ever was. Um, and again, I had like no game at that point, which is frustrating. You know, sucks. Wish I did. <laughs> but most people don't have game at that point. Um, let's see. Um, one, I mean, you should be getting a number from most girls you talk to, unless they have a boyfriend or they're, or they're basically tell you to fuck off. Or they're not interested for whatever reason. But to get 15 numbers in a night, maybe I'm doing 30 approaches. I don't know. You know, I, I don't, I don't track approaches. So like, it, you know, you're going to run into a string of girls that are all going to give you your number, all going to give you their number. You're going to run into a string of girls sometimes that are not interested. So there's variance, but maybe, you know, maybe two to one overall. I don't know. It's, you, sh you shouldn't look at it like that. You should just look at it as bringing your A game to every single interaction, looking at every set in a vacuum, garnishing what you can learn from any mistakes and expecting you can get any girl in the venue. So you shouldn't be like, oh, I've had five approaches and no numbers yet. Like I suck. Maybe all five of those girls had a boyfriend and it would have happened to me too. So you know, again, just bring your bring bring your A game, your best mindset, and your best strategy to every interaction, and then let the chips fall where they may. <laughs> I mean, this is a matter of personal preference. If if you're trying not to black out, um, don't do lots of shots. Don't drink lots of mixed drinks because blackouts, as I found through research, are just a relative spiking in blood alcohol content in short periods of time. So it can happen from doing like a lot of shots or drinking a lot of mixed drinks. If you stick to beer, then, you know, that it's going to bring on a buzz a lot more slow instead of hitting you like a freight train after doing a bunch of shots and, and you won't black out typically on beer. <laughs> so I would probably recommend a beer if you, you know, calorie conscious, drink something like Michelob Ultra. <laughs> um you know, or if you're just planning on literally limiting it to two or three, you can just drink like vodka on the rocks or some shit like vodka soda for like the cleanest, uh, you know, set of calories. Let's see. Um, yeah, I have that too somewhere. Let's see. Okay, yeah, good question. So, how do you avoid getting caught gaming other sets by previous girls you gained in night game? I don't usually care about that. That's the beauty of night game is if it's like a crowded venue. If you're off, if you're out on like an off night and there's not many people there and people can, are all looking at each other, that's different. But you want to be going to the biggest places that that preferably have multiple floors or multiple rooms. And if you get like a number from a really hot girl, you're gonna make out. I typically will try to switch rooms or switch floors. And if that's not possible, I will just go to a different 
part of the, you know, if it's just one big room, I'll go to a different part of the room. But they don't know who you're there with. They don't know who you already know. They're not fucking monitoring you after the after the interaction like you think they are. And I just try not to make it very obvious. Like there's a huge difference as you're getting a whole bunch of numbers to like be handing your number or handing your phone to a girl like this, like, hey, like put your number in versus like, okay, hey, put your number in and passing it to her like down on the low, almost like a drug deal, right? It should be relatively inconspicuous. And also like say I've made out with a girl and I'm going to go make out with another girl um, or, or pull a girl by the hand or whatever. I'm looking for that girl I made out with to make sure she's not looking at me before I go for the make out, right? Or I'm like trying to be isolated to a different room or whatever. So I don't really care. And they're not, they're almost never going to be like, oh, I, I saw you talking to other girls. There's, it's not, you're not her fucking boyfriend. You can do whatever the fuck you want. She's probably talking to other people too. So, just don't worry about that, right? Like in general, if you have like a really good interaction where you don't want to risk blowing that girl out or you got a good make out, just switch rooms or switch venues or go to a different part of the room. Um, again, like, great. You know, everyone can be, have their opinions on this. I'm just saying there's a lot of hard, objective, empirical evidence against him that probably will be damning, okay? But... You know, you can think it's the Matrix or conspiracy or whatever. Um, <laughs> yeah, I lived in Puerto Rico in 2016. Uh, the girls are hot. It's very unsafe there. I was almost shot three times. No joke. Like in an outdoor bar, there was like a shooting with like 10 people that got shot. I almost got shot there. Um, scary. I, I almost got shot at a daytime street festival and at a restaurant. So like it's very dangerous. And I was almost in altercations a couple times with guys at the at the bar. Like people are like kind of hot headed there. They have a temper, and a lot of people are in poverty and carry weapons. So there's like a big problem with like shootings and, and murders there. Um, that aside, the safety factors aside, I fucked a lot of really hot girls there. There's a lot, you know, they have nice bodies and shit. Um, and I know that I know the San Juan scene really well. Um, I was there for the the four percent corporate tax and zero percent capital gains tax uh let's see um no i think they're probably friends but jay waller is a huge fucking dork like he's just a guy that's like incredibly incongruent with all the messages he's saying just like he's repeating copywriter messages and the tates you know built him up like I showed that he had a, a Jay Waller fitness brand that was really unpopular like two years ago. Right. And they're making him out to be like this, like steel industry magnet. It's like, okay. Um, you know, they also befriended little dorks like Sneeko, Aiden Ross. Right. So they do, they do like befriend anyone who can give them more of a platform. Jay Waller, they, they it was kind of in the reverse where they like built him up. But again, I, I heard Jay Waller doesn't really get chicks and neither does his fucking roommate, Sterling Cooper. Just a couple of guys that dress well and go to the gym. Who cares? Right. So they can all be at, you know, war room events at a table of dudes taking pictures with cigars and whiskeys. Who gives a shit about that stuff? Right. Oh, I want to be like them. You want to fucking hang out with dudes all night, see who, who has a cooler watch and stuff. Okay. Yeah. Go, go fucking do that. They're fucking losers at the end of the day, right? Just guys trying to throw money around and be cool. Um, let's see. Yep, 100%. Um, yeah. Yeah, I am going to be interviewed by Valuetainment. They had Andrew Tate on. They fucking have Rolo on, Fresh and Fit on. Yes, I'm aware. And I probably will openly bash those guys. I don't know. We'll see where the conversation goes. Um, let's see. Uh, it's Ross Jeffries, not Jeff Jeffries. Yeah. The, okay. So the, let me tell a story. So there was this girl. I was like driving on the way to a, maybe to a restaurant or something with my friend, Mike. This was, this was like 
10 years ago, maybe even 11 years ago in Philadelphia. And there was this really hot girl walking down the street. I had like a black sports car and I was, you know, I was like in traffic and I was like, dude, we got to approach that girl. He's like, all right, fucking pull over. I'm like, well, you're on the passenger side. You're going to have to fucking say something to her. I'm like, get her to come over to the window and I'll, and I'll talk to her. And he's like, we're going to look really creepy. I'm like, who cares? Right. There's no, you don't have any other option if you're fucking driving. So I literally pull it again, but as, as a side note, like if you're at a light or something and there's a hot girl, roll your window down and just be like, yell out your number and just put your, put your fucking number and you don't have time to run an interaction. You just go straight for the number close. Um, anyways, we pull over the girl was like, what the fuck? My friend's like, Hey, come here for a sec. I'm like, Hey, I know we, we seem totally fucking weird right now and creepy. Uh, what do you, you know, where are you, where are you off to? Like, what are you up to right now? And she's like, Oh, I'm, I'm in med school. I'm going to like our formal or whatever. And I was like, I know you don't know us, but like, it's fucking freezing. Like, I don't mind giving you a ride. This is before Uber. I was like, I don't mind giving you a ride. And she's like, okay. Um, she's like, I guess she's like, I don't know if this is a good idea to accept from a stranger, but I guess I'll come in. And then she came in and she had like a British accent. And I was like, are you, are you British? And she's like, no, I went to uh, college at Cambridge on a Bill Gates scholarship. She's like, I did two master's degrees there. And I was like, Oh, I have two masters too. And she's like, Oh, I'm at, I'm in UPenn's, uh, phd md program md phd program like super smart chick super hot and we just flirted and stuff got her number and then she ended up becoming a girlfriend and there was no other way to do that approach and you know we could have like parked the car in traffic on the side of the street with flashers on potentially but um you just want to try to make the best fit however you can do it and that girl like wanted to get married and she was like perfect on paper, like super hot. Already had two masters, was in, was in an MD PhD program. She was in CrossFit, had a dog. She was like too regimented, like had to be in bed at 10. Like we'd be having sex or something. And she at 10 o'clock, she'd like stop sex during during the sex and be like, I have to go to bed at 10. Like she's like, you don't understand if I don't sleep 10 to 6 and get my eight hours, like I can't function. It's like, okay. Um, but she was too like rigid for me. She didn't have a lot of time. She was always studying. I broke up with her. She's like devastated, but I wouldn't have met her in any other way. She wasn't on Tinder and well, Tinder wasn't even popular yet, but like she, I, I don't think she used the online apps and she said she didn't go to bars and clubs. So, you know, that was like the only way to meet her. Um, yeah. I mean, I always use that girl as an example of like a girl that was like perfect on paper, but I didn't really like her that much because like she was hot, she was cool, she was funny, um, super smart, super intellectual, but she was like too rigid. I, I'm more of like, like here's a perfect example. Like on New Year's Eve, we that year we like called. Uh, we were supposed to go to like meet some other couple for dinner, and I um, called like a taxi because again there was no Uber yet, and the taxis were all backed up, and like the taxi ended up not coming, and then we were gonna like miss the dinner, or we did miss the dinner, and she's like, "What are we gonna do?" I'm like, "Let's just fucking get sushi or some shit." So like, all right, I really like this place, but like, you know, she called, it was like full and there's like no parking. So like uh, we literally ordered to go pick shit up and there was no like Uber Eats and stuff yet. And I like drove there and she's like, there's no parking the night's ruined. I'm like, who gives a fuck? I just like drove up on the sidewalk with, my, with the sports car and just put on the flash flashers. She's like, you're going to get arrested. I'm like, who fucking cares? Like we're not going to get arrested. And I'm like, look, you can do stuff like this. Like, and people on the start sidewalk were like, oh my God. I just like got the sushi, came in. We like ate the sushi and then we went to the fucking New Year's party. I'm like, look, see, the night's still fine. But she's like, no, it's ruined because we missed the dinner. But, you know, like little things would like throw her off. Like if they're out of a fruit at a grocery store, she'd like, that would ruin her day. So I don't want to deal with that kind of shit or like stopping sex in the middle of sex because she has to go to bed at 10. It's like, it was like not rolling with the punches whatsoever. Whereas I'm kind of like a fly by the seat of my pants kind of guy. Um, all right. Anyways. Yeah, hi, I wanted to meet you real quick. I'm John, or hey, I just I just want to meet you real quick. Um, yeah, again, like, don't fucking just ignore. Like, the best thing to do is, like, ignore. Like, full retard, already been exposed, just ignore. Who cares what he considers himself or what he's doing? Just fucking dumbass. And he's he fucking is eva he's evading taxes, though, and he fucking um, is paying girls Bitcoin cash. That was all proven. 
uh faking lifestyle shoots braddock has fucking demolished him he's tried to like report the video like 100 times it's still up um but he took down our instagram he took down our kajabi you know a bunch of services within our company caused us a bunch of headaches it's fucking annoying total fucking cocksucker punk if i ever see him i'm gonna fucking knock him out um let's see uh is the website safe <laughs> yes it is safe <laughs> uh for the challenge here do you need zoom um if you're in vip then zoom is preferred but you can join through like streaming links on facebook as well um barbecue is really popular here just like different just like traditional brazilian barbecue is really good okay this is a good question how would you pick up women in the elevator? You don't have much time. So let's say that like, this is a common scenario. Let's say you're in an apartment building or you're, or you're like at an office building for an appointment. You're going, you're going down, a girl gets in on a certain floor. Maybe she gets in on like floor four or five and you have like four floors left. I literally just reach for my phone, right? Like as if you were in like a duel, like in the, in the fucking West. <laughs> it's like, you just immediately reach for the phone and I'm like, hey, I throw parties. Let me invite you sometime. Let's say it's a girl in your building. Hey, I, hey, I live on such and such floor. I throw parties. Let me invite you sometime. Here, put your number in. That's literally the whole interaction. And they often will put their number in and they often will meet up. What else are you going to do? Hey, uh, you know, blah, 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 blah. Okay, yeah, nice meeting you. She's gone. Okay. Like, you don't have, you have to compress. I have a video on this and I use an elevator as an example. You have to compress the whole interaction down. Okay, same if you're like in a grocery store checkout line. There's people right behind you. You want to go for the number quickly. You don't want to like, you can't run an interaction when there's no time to run the interaction. Same if the girl's like second or third in line at a, at a bar or club line. And like, she's about to like go into the fucking venue and you're on the outside. You want to get the number really fucking quick. If she's jump, if she's going to a cab, I've had situations where the girl's like going to a cab. I'm like, hey, and she's like, what? She's like about to get in the cab. I'm like, yell at your number. And she's like, what? I'm like, I want to meet up with you, but I can't, you're too far away and you're going in a cab, yell out your number. Oftentimes they will. And, and a lot of times those will convert, right? Because she's getting, that's very memorable. I, I've been in, you know, running programs in New York city, like on the high line and there's fucking girls walking underneath and I'm like, Hey, yell out your number. And they're like, what? And I'm like, yeah, you know, and then I'll fucking even close those girls like that day sometimes. Cause they're like, some of them will like come up. They're like, what's going on? <laughs> but like, you have to like make use of the of the limited time that you have okay i get in my head when i try to implement the 100 out of 100 mindset when talking to a chick um you have to assume that you got the girl before you go in and you have to be cognizant of all the things you bring to the table i tell guys to make a list of accomplishments cool experiences hobbies and interests and then keep that in mind and as you get success that will snowball and, and reinforce um the fact that you can get positive results um it you know it depends from city to city and it depends from culture to culture i mean i was in greece last summer in santorini and the girls were receptive i mean um unless the country is like ultra prude or conservative then it, you're fine it is easy pulling women in houston um okay good uh no I, I heard it's annoying there's a lot of fucking rich dumbasses just trying to throw money around it's fucking super annoying there i mean i don't know like they weren't even allowing girls to stay overnight at guys houses for a while i think that's not the case anymore but they also weren't allowing women to show any skin including like even like a shoulder a lot of fucking dumb rules there um let's see what else can I do with $27? Yeah, I mean, again, it's it should be a no-brainer to learn all of my cold approach system for 27 bucks. Yeah. It's pretty <laughs> pretty good deal. Um let's see. So it was about Liz in the background in her underwear. Uh let's see. I saw a group of three women 
waiting for the elevator. They're hot. I regret not approaching because I was scared. You have to go straight in. You have to you have to train yourself and condition yourself to go in instantly. Um, don't fucking wait around. I have a video coming out tomorrow about taking action immediately and not letting the negative stuff overcome you or, or um, overpower you. But yeah, you want to just go straight in chat with them you can even ride in the elevator with them if you need more time in the interaction even if you weren't planning on going back up just for the sake of the interaction but again like for any situation where you saw women that were hot and you got scared force yourself to go in it helps a lot with your confidence if you know exactly what to say and do which i will be training this weekend for 27 dollars um for me the hardest that i've been to is ukraine this level of prudence it's like one night stands are incredibly difficult there they're very anti one night stand there i would never go back there you know war or not i would never i would never want to game there again it's just too frustrating there's you have to go on like third dates fourth dates fifth dates sometimes i had girls that didn't want to kiss after four dates in public which is insane um never happened anywhere else consistently uh let's see What's up, Blake? Yeah, Blake was in the um, eight-week program. Recently called approach Ukrainian 10. Been dating since. It's awesome. Uh, let's see. By the way, your buddy is going to take a program in San Diego with Josh. Uh, James. He said you guys have, have met up over there in Florida. Um all right, let's see. But yeah, Blake did Blake did really well. He banged a lot of hot girls in the program. What's your lay count now, Blake? I know you started at like 30 or something like that. Uh, let's see. What does cold approach mean? Uh, walking up to strangers in public. That's it. <laughs> what does cold approach mean? Uh, no, that's dumb. Um, our products are stuff that you log into. It's it's mostly me speaking over PowerPoint presentations, but there's also flow charts, uh, interviews, objection answer things, homework things to make sure you're taking away the right things, etc. Um, let's see. What are your thoughts? Caleb Jones, Alpha Male 2.0. He advocates a two-way open relationship says one way open doesn't last more than nine months. I've been in a one way open relationship for almost three years. So he's wrong based on my own experience. And I have other clients that have been in one way, one way things for a long time too. Um, he says it takes two dates to close a new chick. No, that's absolutely wrong. I heard Vadim from honest signal says that as well. I close in my clients as well, 75 to 80% of my first dates at a high level. I've talked to a lot of girls about this. I mean, some of them are, are annoyed. Like the thing is, is that most guys that approach them are losers. Most guys that approach them are low value. They assume by default that you are too in lots of cases. So you have to show them otherwise. But, you know, being able to progress things forward properly, sexualize properly, and have the proper mindsets is going to make a huge difference. Um, working table sets. So if girls are at a table at a nightclub, um, one one way is you wait until the girl you want to talk to goes to the bathroom, which they will often do if they're drinking, right? So if you happen to notice a hot girl leave a table and go to the bathroom, approach her on the way to the bathroom or on the way back from the bathroom. That is where you'll get her attention the most. Um, if you're trying to game her at the table, you can do it coming around the back from the side and not trying to attract a lot of attention. But there's almost like this force field effect at tables where girls and especially guys, if they, you know, which is usually the case, the guys paid for the table. They have these girls hanging out there because they paid for the table and they think they like own these girls, right? So if, if you're going to be coming in from behind, make sure you don't attract a lot of attention and get the number pretty quickly before it gets cock blocked by the people at the table. Um, additionally, at a more advanced level technique, you can tell friends of the girl that you want that 
the guys that she's talking to or the guys at the table are creepy and you see them like being creepy with girls every weekend. Um, and you can get her to like, you know, save her friend and like have them leave the table and then game them that way. Let's see. Um, yeah, I mean the, the fucking vice documentary reaction. Yeah. I mean, cause it, it was, it's copyrighted material. Like your, your channel can get a strike on it and then you can't uh, post for a week. So that's why I brought it down. Um, we will see. Let's see. I don't know. But the thing is like a lot of guys are like, Oh, I need tattoos to get laid. No, you don't. I didn't even get my first one. Until I was like 35 when I was at, like 800 lays or something like that. And then I didn't get another one until I was at over 1,200 lay count. You're very respectful. Um, another dating coaches love to bolster them, put themselves up and put down other people. I mean, I, I, I make no qualms about the fact that I have the best system and the best game in the industry. I say that a lot. That's not bragging or being arrogant. I have the facts to support that and the proof to back it up. Um, and I also do put down a lot of other coaches, but because their strategies are bad, not just because I, not just because of the fact that there are other coaches. If there were other coaches with good systems and they were getting people results, I wouldn't trash them. I promise, I wouldn't. I'm not. I'm not just hating on everyone that's not me. Like the guys that were on my live yesterday, I really respect those guys. Close friends, of like ten years, guys that have banged 400, 500 plus. Um, there was a coach that couldn't make it. That's at 800. And look at the difference. In the fucking um, testimonials that come back. So the coach that couldn't make it, he just ran a, a boot camp in Asia. And listen, let me just read this real quick. This is a short little testimony from the student. Took a three-day boot camp. Um, the, the coach's name is Ryan. It's not It's not my ex-coach Ryan. It's a different Ryan. It's, it's, there was an ex-coach Ryan that I almost sued. This is a different Ryan. Um, the JA coach in Korea. Ryan was able to help make some subtle but extremely effective adjustments to my behaviors. This just this testimony just came yesterday. Uh, subtle but extreme, extremely effective adjustments to my behaviors in each environment we were in and pushed me to get a ton of practice with them until they were habitualized. Even on our polls, he continued to stay on standby and was there for me every second of the boot camp. All in all, it was extremely, in all caps, extremely professional throughout the entirety of it. His depth, now this is where, you know, the guys say, oh, isn't 100 lays enough? Isn't 200 lays enough? No, it's not. Not to coach. No, it's not. Here's an 800 lay count guy, the next highest lay count guy on my team besides myself. And he said in the review, the student said his depth of knowledge of the country, the cultural nuances, the best area for girls and the intricacies of game is insanely valuable for anyone that wants to train with him. His expertise in picking up is unparalleled. With an insane attention to detail to every facet of game, asking him questions was like working with a human encyclopedia. All of the answers were just there, clearly validated by years and years of hard field experience. Boom. Nothing can fucking match that. No fucking dumbass. I don't care if he has a million subs. I don't care if he has 100 million subs. Most of these guys are talking out of their ass. Fresh and fit has a million subs. They don't know jack shit about good game. They've never fucking done the blood, sweat, and tears. They've never had to go through all the fucking you know, shit that comes with mastering this. Okay, They haven't had to go through that. There were guys that were, one was a personal trainer, one was a customer service representative. And they fucking figured out a formula. Actually, someone else figured that out for them. It's not a whole other story. But, all you know, they just found out that if you kick girls off the show, people will like that and watch. Okay, so it's just fucking lowbrow trash. Nothing to do with good game whatsoever. Um, let's see. All in all, the boot camp is worth every penny. Very excited to continue uh, to implement the adjustments, apply them, and... and and see where things take me. Um, all right, let's keep going. Yeah, go look it up. Let's let's do a simple Googling here for you. Average life expectancy, 1,500. Um, let's see. In the Middle Ages, average life expectancy was 35, and they already had some medicine and shit there let's see going a little further back um 
global life expectancy used to be less than 30 years. We're meant to reproduce and die. We're not meant to fucking be 70. Um, even in from the year 1500 to the year 1800, life expectancy in Europe was between 30 and 40 years old. Okay, I'm going to be 40 next year. I, I'd be dead. And because there was fucking basic things lacking in sanitation, there was basic things lacking in vaccinations. A lot of the stuff we take for granted that, you know, all these vaccinations we get as a baby and, and that kind of shit, that was wiping a lot of people out. There was, you know, before law and order, there was people would just kill each other. <laughs> like, okay. Um, yeah, of course. But the thing is, like, here's the thing, okay? I, I told I talked about this with Ross Jeffries. Ross Jeffries doesn't look at it as a rejection. Ross Jeffries look at looks at it as like an opportunity. He's extending an opportunity to connect. If they're not into it, who gives a fuck? There's others that will. That's a good reframe. However, you can also look at it from the point of view of like sales, right? When you cold knock on doors, door to door sales, or you cold call uh, potential prospects, um, you can be. Let's think of a situation where you have the best salesman in the world. Let's say he knocks on someone's door that's in a bad mood or that doesn't want to buy anything, or that just feels like being rude. They can open the door and say, thanks, but no thanks, fuck off, and slam the door. Now, does that change that that guy is the best salesman in the world in our example? No, it does not. It means jack shit, okay? But the difference is a veteran sales guy is going to think, okay, that is not a person that I even need to bother pitching, and I don't need to give a shit about that. They're not going to buy from me or anyone else. A rookie or a guy that's, you know, letting his emotions be dictated by the by the reactions he gets from the doors knocked. And I witnessed this firsthand when I did door-to-door -door sales first summer. We'll get extremely upset. He'll take it personally or he'll like want to like throw it back at the person. Like I saw a guy tell a, a junior sales guy to fuck off and slam the door. And he's like, well, fuck you. Blah, blah, you know, okay. I used to do that in the early days of pickup. If a girl was really rude to me, I'd be like, well, fuck off. You're a cunt. And then some fucking huge guy would come in and I'd be like, oh, I knew she was going to be mistaken about that. I was talking about my ex, right? And I had to like apologize sometimes if the guy like wanted to, you know, wanted to take it further. Oh, apologize. Nobody ever fucking fought me. Right? I didn't know how to fight at that time anyways. Probably got my ass kicked. But like and maybe people were intimidated because I was tall. But like, um, you know, like I used to get pissed like oh i'm not gonna let her say that shit to me now i look at it like good thing i didn't waste my time with that girl right who cares like like here's literally how how i'll do a bunch of sets this is like good to sh for you guys to see ready hey i want to meet you real quick sorry i have a boyfriend okay cool have a good night hey what's up i want to meet you real quick oh i'm not interested go away okay hey happy hey what's up i want to meet like literally like it doesn't even register and people are amazed when they see this when they hang out with me in public they're like like you move on really quickly, right? Hey, I want to meet you real quick. I'm on my husband's right over there. Okay, have a good night. Instantly move on, right? And I do the same thing if the girl is like stonewalling or just being relatively non-compliant in general. Say the girl's looking down at her phone. Hey, I want to meet you real quick. Yeah. Can I talk to you for a sec? Yeah. Hey, I know you're like on your phone. Like, can I just meet you real fast? Okay, I'm off to the next girl. I'm not going to like stand there and cycle lines and openers and all that shit. The girl doesn't want to talk to me. Talk to me. She's busy. She doesn't want to talk. Who fucking cares what the reason is? I don't fucking care. Right? If a girl tells you to fuck off, who cares? You don't know what happened to her that night. She might have been spam approached by 30 RSD guys. That's, you know, that's becoming the case in a lot of major cities. Um, and it has been for a while. She could be in a bad mood she could actually have a boyfriend right like who fucking cares right but yeah girls will insult you if, you if you can't handle a girl telling you to fuck off or that you suck or that you're ugly or that you're a loser or whatever then maybe cold approaching is not for you right but the world is not always a friendly place you have to be a man and, and fucking build thick skin and be able to handle shit like that so that's why i always tell guys to to like fucking put in the time and work to master cold approach it's going to go a long way and it's going to benefit every area of your life. Um, I don't know what the cruelest thing is. P girls have, you know, the thing is too, when, when girls try to insult you, a lot of times they just go to like generic shit. They're like, Oh, like this, this, this. And, and I talk to like friends and stuff and they're like, Oh yeah, the girls say the exact same shit to me. 
Like when a girl's trying to be mean, she'll just say the things that she thinks will hurt you the most. And a lot of guys will take those personally. And I get clients that have been told shit by girls that like they can't get out of their head. And they let that define their worth. And they let that define their confidence. And they let that define their success with girls. Well, this girl said this. And, and so, you know, and it comes in all shapes and sizes. I had a, a client that was 45, an Italian guy um, in Poland. And he's like, a girl told me I was old enough to be her dad. So I don't want to like talk to any younger girls anymore. I'm like, tons of girls will love that you're older. And we pulled a 19 year old college student on that boot camp, and that shattered his, you know, whole problem about like how he can't bang younger girls. We pulled an 18 and 19 year old college students from Krakow in Warsaw, and he was like a new man after that. And I, and it, but it, you know, and, and seeing is believing, obviously, but. I've been, I've coached thousands and thousands and thousands of guys. Like this has been what I've done with most of my time over the past decade. And I can tell you that it's best to not let it. I tell guys like, here's your value at hundred out of hundred. There's a brick wall with external events. Hey, you suck. Hey, you're a loser. Hey, that's why I don't care when these black pill guys insult me. Okay. Who's bang models everywhere? Me. Okay. They can call me a three. They can call me a two. They can call me a negative a hundred, a negative infinity, times infinity i don't care right oh but you're human that has to affect you somehow i don't care what some little fucking kid on the internet thinks i don't care what really what anyone like i care like i care if i'm fucking hot girls which i am so you know i must be doing something right right those guys are not those guys are fucking on the making toxic videos and shit and convincing guys to give up on dating it's over for you man it's over for you man it's like, like they have like wheat waffles has this magic wand. Hey, oh, it's actually over for you, bruv. No, it's not. And I'm on the other side, like show me each person that it's over for and I'll get them laid today. Okay. I promise like with high chance that like today or this week, those guys are going to be having sex. And I, I love it. I get black pill guys all the time. Hey, I thought it was over for me and I just banged an eight. I never thought that would be possible in my life. There you go. Stop listening to little 19 year old pizza delivery kids on the internet. Okay. Um, <laughs> dude, they all do that. I will never do that. I promise. I know a bunch about business. I will never do that. That's a telltale sign. Like who did that? Valentino Cohen did that. Julian Blanc did that. Um, Seal Chen apparently now has done that because they can scam a bigger audience. Okay. It's easier to fucking promise everyone you're going to help them break out of the nine to five that you know it's, it's a little less threatening to their ego when you're like hey let's get this thing with girls handled they're like oh, i'm going to be getting help from another man on how to get girls oh no I'm, I'm good bro it's like okay you know go fuck go go fucking strike out a whole bunch more go you know deal with the quality that you're at which is probably not that great go live a, a dating life that's far inferior to your expectations or, or, or dreams or wishes just because you're too proud to get help from a guy that's devoted his life to mastering it. Okay. Um, yes, it is. And unfortunately, guys, you know, speaking of other retards in the space, Hamza tells people to delete Tinder and stop going to clubs. And what's the justification? His fictional character, Adonis, who's the caricature of the ideal man, says so. Isn't that nice? And you know who wants to still go to clubs and use tinder the straw man position okay they, they straw man argue the opposition jeffrey they do a pinch zoom on his face and hamza makes his voice all high but jeffrey says that clubs are great and jeffrey says that tinder is good adonis says tinder is for losers and adonis says you need to be scarce and i and it's like what the fuck is happening here it's it's such a like it's like it's like it's like pay no attention to the man behind the curtain like Hamza is literally convincing people in mass to believe any dumb theory he has. Okay, and believe me, they're very dumb. Based on the backing and support of a fictional character, literally a cartoon. Then, if you still want to disagree, you know, everyone wants to fucking agree with the, the ideal man. Okay, keep in mind, he's a fictional character. <laughs> you know, again... Like it, like on the surface, okay, maybe it's compelling. You're like, look at this like chiseled, 
you know, Greek God here, and he's telling me to delete Tinder. Uh, maybe I should, right? But no, that the thing is, he's not. Okay, first of all, he's not even real. It's Hamza telling you to do that, and Hamza is a fucking dumb fuck who showed his girlfriends on camera. They look like shit. He sucks with girls, and so you know, and not to mention his little deformity that he has there that you know also made him go fucking nuts. Girls don't like him. What's the solution? Focus on yourself. Self improvement. Okay, ad nauseum. Let's all work on ourselves, bros, and then and then the, the girls will just flock to you. No, that's not how it works. I'm here to tell you that's not how it works. Go try it. Not how it works. Didn't work for him either. <laughs> He's fucking living proof of it. He got in great shape. Doesn't mean shit. The gr the girlfriends he had has look look terrible. He brings them on camera. They they look below a five. They look below a four. But Adonis says you should do what Ham. No, Adonis, there's no Adonis. Like, I need to make a video that's, that says, like, here's the structure of every ha argument Hamza makes. He appeals to a fictional character that doesn't exist. Disqualified. You can't do that. It, you can, and it tricks a lot of dumb people, but that's not a valid argument. Secondly, he straw man argues the opposition by painting him out as a Jeffrey, where he pinch zooms the face and raises the pitch. And he's like, but Jeffrey says blah, blah, blah. You're like, well, I don't want to be like fucking Jeffrey. I'd rather be like this fucking chiseled Greek god guy that doesn't exist. I'm going to delete Tinder. And I look in the comments and it's fucking painful. People are like, okay, I deleted Tinder. Like, thank you so much, Hamza. I'm never going to a club again. It's like he just chopped out your two major lead sources. Now you're way more fucked. Okay. What are you going to do? Go put, put up notes in your parents' house on the walls like he does, you know, so you can be like him too. Total fucking dumbass. Okay. And poisonous. It's great if he wants to fucking have a shitty dating life. And he, and, you know, he wants to have all these poisonous ideas, but keep it to yourself. Don't go pollute that stuff in mass. And he's always bragging about being a cult leader. I swear these guys like fucking, not only are they like destroying tons of lives, but they take pleasure in it. They, they get, they get off on like building a cult of, of fucking morons following, following their nonsense. Um, let's see. Uh, no idea. Never been to Japan. But I do know that Japan is like <laughs> very undersexed. Like they, like the men in Japan are like so focused on work and business that they like don't really have much sex there. And like they run like paid advertising, encouraging people to like have sex. It's a fucking weird place. And a lot of people have like relationships or, or interests or romantic interests in like virtual characters and holograms and stuff like that. Very weird. And actually not that weird. I mean, it's from like a cognitive scientific as you know, standpoint, it makes sense. Um, but you know, just different than our culture. All right, let's see. I, I did live in China though, and the girls were very um prude and traditional, but I but I did bang a lot of them. Um <laughs> but like a lot of the girls I banged said they had like one or two lay count. And they're like, I've never met a guy this confident, like not not even close, because a lot of the, the guys are like passive and stuff like that. Um, let's see. What does your coaching plan cover? Um, so I have a video about the differences between my products. I mean, the, the thing coming up this weekend is going to teach all of cold approach for $27. Um, but I do have the eight week program, which is like a full comprehensive solution. Occam's razor is like all the fundamentals do it yourself. Lee's machine is all the lead working portion, Tinder messaging and texting. Um, and then live boot camps is meant to hone in your cold approach with a coach giving you feedback in real time live. But I have a video here, references between my products. And you can look on our website too. And that goes over the differences. We have like a boot camp page now with all the dates and all that shit. Um, Let's see. Um, give me a sec. Um, okay. okay, so. Um, 
yeah so look at look at those links baby stepping is super important actually let me see here somebody all right i'll get to that in a second all right so baby stepping just think of compliance like mathematically right like here's the compliance test and maybe like sorry i need like a third hand let's say like here's her compliance level where she'll comply and you're here and you're trying to get her to go here but she'll comply here if you break this into two separate pieces you have compliance here and then you have the relative amount of compliance for the next piece there right so mystery talks about in his book when he talks about hoop theory he says that if you were to ask a girl to like trade place with you if you were standing up and you want to take her seat let me see if she's ready for TikToks. So we're out of time. All right, I'll rapid fire through the rest of these. We got to fucking film TikTok soon. Um, make sure you, you follow me on TikTok too. We have over 40 million views on TikTok. Um, he says that if you were to ask a girl like while you're standing in front of her seat at the bar to switch place with you, she might be like, no, what are you talking about? Fuck off. But if you're like, hold, if you're like, hold out your hand, it's easy for her to take your hand. Then if you like have her stand up, it's easy for her to stand up. You do a spin, you switch places with her, you sit down. Now you've done the exact same thing, but she's complied with it in one case. So if a girl won't pull and I answer her objections and she won't like leave after the answering objections, then oftentimes I will isolate her to a bar near the exit. Or I will invite her to the smoking section if it's near the exit or outside. And reason being is when you isolate or, or when you move them, when you get some level of compliance in a baby stepping move, you've now generated what's called compliance momentum. She's agreed with this first part, it's easier for her to agree to the second part. Also, um, you've made the compliance tests smaller and easier to comply with. All of the game is compliance. You're going from open to close like this. Elite level game is giving them little tiny steps the whole way through. Everything in between, including newbie guys, they're skipping steps. They're not even directing it forward most of the time, but they're also going from like here to like here. And it's like too big of a compliance test and they get shut down. And so a lot of good game is like knowing how to move it forward properly and, and make it small steps all the way throughout. Um, <laughs> what the fuck? Have you ever had frequent urination from anxiety? I don't think so. Uh just fucking piss and then go approach. I don't, I don't know what to say there. Um, <laughs> piss your pants, maybe. Uh, you can say that you you run a company or you're working on a company or that you're a graduate student. Um, let's see. I didn't. I've never been to Peru, but I got a Peruvian girl pregnant that wanted to keep the kid, but eventually got a. Um, What the fuck was I saying? Oh, she got a she got an abortion eventually, but then I got my vasectomy right after. Um, <laughs> probably. I uh, cannot speak about him anymore publicly. We have a legal settlement about that, so used to, you know I'll leave it at, I'll leave it at that. Uh, let's see. Watch my video on threesome blueprint. I don't have time to link it. I got to go in a moment here look up blueprint but I have, I have a lot of videos on my channel on threesomes just type in threesome i've had well over 100 new threesomes just in the past three years but i've been doing them for like 10 years so i lived with three girls in the house last year so it was like threesomes constantly we'd pull girls in the club and have lots of them as well um yeah i just had a client ask me this question as well liz wanted a monogamous relationship at first so at first i was just like seeing girls behind her back well i mean at first she was on rotation, right? We weren't official. She was just like my main girl on rotation. And then she caught me with a girl at one point. Um, wait, we became boyfriend, girlfriend. I think I was still seeing some chicks on the side. I don't remember if she caught me when she was a main rotation girl, but it was hard on her. And then I told her like, you know, you, you kind of have to like break the frame about monogamy. So I talk about how monogamy isn't natural. I give the scientific evidence for that. I talk about how it was mostly imposed by the church and the state. And I frame it how I'm going to bang girls on the side, but just for like ex extra sexual variety, I'm not going to have feelings for them. The feelings are going to be with her. Like her and I are going to be in, you know, she's like the only girl I love. Right. And then 
we do all like the boyfriend girlfriend type shit. Like we, you know, she knows everything about me. I know everything about her. You know, we ha we have a close connection, etc. Um, but I just make it like a non negotiable thing. So I say like, you know, this is how it's going to be. You're welcome to leave. It's not. In the girl's defense, it is it is a little bit hard for on them because I don't really spring this on them until they're like pretty invested in me and they like me a lot. And then I tell them like, in order to stay with me, like it's going to be like this. And so they're not inclined to leave because they like me a lot. Um, but it also helps to have like a you know at, at one at one point we realize it's better to be like open and honest about you know when I'm seeing girls and stuff because. Before it would be like, hey, I'm going to go, you know, I'd make up excuses. I'm going to go do this or go do that. And she knew I'd be seeing girls a lot of time. And, and then she'd find out later, like, oh, I was with a girl and, and she'd be pissed that I lied to her. So at some point, maybe like a year and a half ago, we, I just started being fully open about every time I'm seeing a girl. And it's way better that way um, because there's no secrets. And then um, we, she just has like some ground rules, which is which are totally reasonable that we talked about as two adults in a relationship that, you know, what what would make you the most comfortable here? No sleepovers, okay? Deal. Um, don't go out on dates if you can avoid it with the girls. Okay, no problem. Um, don't do lovey-dovey shit with them. Okay. And, oh, and she want, she likes that I shower after, you know, she doesn't want me to have, like, some girl's fucking juices all over, which, again, reasonable. And in the beginning, I would, like, kind of fuck it off, like, only shower if she, like, told me, reminded me to. But now I, out of respect for her, I make it a habit to shower after I come back from seeing a girl. Um, and I try not to violate the rules. And, you know, it, it's a special situation and it, it deserves, you know, just being respectful and open with the communication about it with the girl is the best, is the best way to go, I found. Um, okay. And I, and I tell them, I know it's a double standard. I know your friends and your family and whoever else you tell about how we're doing things here is, is not going to be okay with it. And they're going to say, hey, that's not fair. Why does he get to do it? And you can't. But most societies in, in the past, the man was nomin you know, the man was had a bunch of partners and the women typically only had one. The, the women were mostly monogamous. And that has evolutionary roots. And I've explained that. And, you know, she's happy with me anyway. She doesn't want one other guys. I, you know, we have a great relationship. But she knows that it's important for me to see other people on the side. So, um, you know, it's it's about open communication. And I didn't it get a lot better once I was open about when I was seeing other girls and stuff. Yeah. Oh, wow. And and started respecting the rules you put forth a little more. Mm -hmm. So and we and we have threesomes too. Like there's girls that you know when we go out together we do cold approach where she's like my wing my wing woman, mm -hmm. and like the girls are always super receptive every time when yeah. she opens. Cause she has like fun energy and the girls think she's pretty and blah, blah, blah. Um, all right. Let's, did you set everything up? Uh, I'm, I am. No. Okay. I'll be done in like five, 10 minutes. Yeah. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, we have over a thousand testimonials on a page. I don't think a lot of you have still seen our proof page. We built this specifically so that you didn't have to take my word for it when I say that we get the best results in the industry. We have proof of that. Um, yeah. Let me just plow through the remainder of these. Um, we run boot camps in Asia, typically either in Seoul, South Korea, or in Bangkok, Thailand. Um, Let's see. What do you do after the meet you real quick? You want to, like, there's no particular order, but you want to be asking logistical questions. I'm going to cover all this this weekend. Asking logistical questions, seat in the pool, which is uh, framing the idea that the two of you are going to meet up later, and being physical, and breaking out of the platonic frames. Um, by the way, for those of you who are on there here right now, hit the like button if you don't mind to help push the video out further. Channel's already limited and shadow banned as shit. Very frustrating. There's a lot of like huge channels with horrible advice, and my videos just get fucking throttled back. Uh, everything's demonetized. You know, at some point they were just like, "Yeah, this guy's <laughs> lucky." I still even have a channel. I fucking say a lot of, I speak my mind a lot. Um, 
going outside the lines of what's acceptable. Uh, let's see. You say about baby step, when is too much baby step? You start looking like Todd V. Um, let's see. Look at it like this, right? Like, here's the compliance test. You try to hit it. You hit an objection. You deal with the objection. If you can pass the objection, then you move forward. If you can't pass the objection, you can try to break it into smaller steps or alternatively just build up more comfort and more value and then retest. Like mystery has a chart where it's like compliance test. You get compliance or you don't get compliance. If you don't get compliance, you show an indicator of disinterest, DHV more, build, build the vibe more, and then try again. But you have to, I teach in my trainings, I'll teach this weekend, how to make what I refer to as a real-time probabilistic assessment of the odds of the girl going home with you, which is a twofold kind of back of the napkin calculation based primarily on her logistical situation and the odds of being able to overcome it. And then basically how on things seem to be, which is just a general assessment of her general compliance level, which is a pretty direct translation to her general DTF level down to fuck level. So it's like, is it on? And can I beat her logistics? If it's not very on and or her logistics are too hard to beat, you leave. You get a phone number and leave if, if it has a chance to be closed later. Um, I have no idea who the fuck Charles Black is. Okay, fair. But, you know, there was also a lot of uh, people were dying of, of unsanitary conditions, of, of diseases, and different stuff like that as well. And there was, you know, before law and order, there, there was it was also easier to die. You know, there was a lot more... Uh, conflicts amongst people and stuff like that and and no consequence if you were to kill someone um i mean i i have to say my stuff like I, i've i pride myself on making it the best stuff in the industry i would say the second best is mystery stuff but i i took his stuff a lot further um but i i still would say mystery the book mystery method is probably the next best teaching in, in the industry after mine Um, <laughs> I, I mean, I've made multiple videos. I think James Marshall is a fucking total dumbass. I think his skills suck. I've demonstrated that in multiple infield breakdowns of his. He, he's like, uh, he, he approaches like a virgin noob. Okay. He walks in like, this is James Marshall's game. Oh, hi, love. Oh, hello there. I'm not a street harassment person. I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm not trying to convert you to any religion. Oh, hi there. What are you up to? that's nice okay it's it's just like ridiculous the girl you see the girls running away in a lot of the infields and stuff like that it's very cringy very bad and I, have to, I did another video showing a guy that took his 15k 10 day program and said he didn't get laid at all and didn't get laid at all for the months after and then that same guy trained with me and got 50 lays in six months and he's like night and day difference james is all like feel good woo, -woo nonsense that doesn't translate into results your stuff is just like hardcore focused on getting laid and, and paying hotter girls. You know, if you want to sign up with James to do yoga and they do meditation sessions and all that, I'm not saying that that's bad. It's just not going to fucking teach you how to get girls, which is the purpose of why you're there. So I, I think he sucks sh absolute shit. I get lots of guys that came to me after not getting any results from his program, but that's the case for most programs in the industry. Um, I disagree with you about Julian. You blamed her for marrying an average girl. Um, again, I, I, I take the firm stance that don't claim you're a world-class guru and have a girl below a nine. The end. Julian's girl's not even an eight. At least to maintain your dignity, have a girl above an eight as your girlfriend or wife. But there's no excuse to not have one below, uh, not have one over, what's it called? There's no excuse to have one below a nine. Ironically, lots of these guys have a girl below a five. What does that say? These are world-class gurus. You're watching their streams. You're watching their fucking videos all the time. They're giving advice how to get girls. What are they doing? Don't tell me it's not relevant. Don't tell me, oh, it's not all about looks and blah, blah, blah. There's tons. Let me repeat. Tons of girls above a nine with amazing personalities. Don't let them tell you that all hot girls suck. Don't let them tell you that all hot girls are thoughts. Don't let them tell you that all, I've dated countless hot girls all over the world, that, some of the best experiences of my life. So have a lot of my friends. Those guys in the stream yesterday, they've done the same thing. Don't let some dumbass who, because they've been snubbed by nines, 
because they're losers, because their game blows, tell you that all nines suck, tell you that all nines are thoughts, tell you that all nines are going to fuck you over, tell you that all nines are going to go for chads and, and guys. Bullshit, 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 bullshit. Okay, and don't let anyone tell you that it's okay for a dating coach to marry a three or a four because her personality is so great and they have a great connection. Inexcusable. I don't care if she has the best personality in the world. Inexcusable. Okay, if, if you disagree with me, then we disagree. But it's for the same reason you wouldn't go to train at the gym with a fat guy that's that's telling you he's so he knows so much about training. It's the same reason you wouldn't go train how to make money by from a homeless guy. Maybe if that homeless guy cleaned up and put on a suit and you didn't know he was homeless, then you'd listen to him. But guys like myself come in and say, hey, look, this guy's fucking homeless. That's his secret. They don't want their fucking ugly girlfriends and wives on display. They fucking hate my guts for showing that. Was that a low blow? I don't think so. I think it's incredibly relevant and it's incredible. It should be fucking put on public display because if you're a world-class guru, don't go have a wife that's a three. Am I crazy? Like they should be able to, it's, it's, I don't even know where to begin with that, right? Like most people would never bang, like, like if you're a guru, you shouldn't ever bang below a seven. Like a seven is the lowest you should ever go. And I don't ever even do that almost ever these days. I haven't for a long time. If you have the fucking skills, you should have not only a girl that's a nine in looks, but you should also be able to get a girl that's a nine that's bisexual, that's smart, that has a good family, and comes from a good family, that has a good heart, that isn't a piece of shit, that isn't a liar, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You can have a long list of requirements. That's what good game can bring you. The problem is they don't have good game. The problem is they're never banging hot girls and they never have. So, you know, I, I disagree with you there. And I think at a minimum, these guys should have a girl that's an eight. Okay. So that girl stuck through him when he was a massive pussy on CNN and when the whole world hated him and all that stuff because he thought he was being a funny guy choking a girl in a, in a photo in Japan. And he was saying, you can just go run, run around do whatever you want and just saying Pikachu and putting their head on your dick. That was funny to all the little losers that, that you know were sitting in their, their mom's house and stuff. He caught global backlash, melted instantly like a massive pussy, put his full colors on display, and this girl helped him through that, and then he settled down with her like a dumbass. Um, let's go. And he, and he has the nerve to make products called 10 Game. My game is a 10.com. I've, I've often made the joke, my wife is a 6.com. Okay, don't fucking go around telling everyone how to get hot girls when you don't have a hot girl. Simple. Common sense. Um, the biggest thing that Nietzsche helped me with, and I really got to go in a moment because we, we got to fucking make TikToks. The biggest thing that Nietzsche helped me with is that just because there's no God, just because there's no afterlife, just because there's no purpose, and just because there's no absolute basis in nature for ethical morality, doesn't mean that all is lost. Doesn't mean that you need to wither away in despair. And you know, my brother's caught in that right now because we again we're very like we come from like this hyper analytical genetics. I don't know how or why, but he's like me. And nihilism has got the best of him. But Nietzsche basically turns nihilism into an empowerment model instead of a defeatist model. He says, listen, okay, there's no God, there's no purpose, there's no, you know, you, know, you might probably disagree with most of those things, but this is my view and Nietzsche's view. There's no God, no purpose, you know, there's no need to subscribe to political or social, social ideologies. There's no basis for ethics, right? Everything's a charade, etc." and everything's repeating an infinite number of times like you know life is just kind of nonsensical instead of being like ah, oh, that all sucks what's the point of doing anything which is what happened to me at first and which is now what's happening to my brother um and what you know elon musk went through that a lot of the great thinkers went through that um you can make it an empowerment model i'm going to create my own values i'm going to create my own purpose and here's like the the big aha like following Nietzsche's outline of like how to be an ubermensch like a superman you can actually like crush life and have like a way better life than everybody else or at least than most people because you're not stuck in you're not constrained inside the lines of what society says is okay right like is a one-way relationship acceptable in the other society fuck no is you know taking out lots of credit card debt and and getting a big loans to, to live off years for that you know not intending to pay it back is that advised? No. 
Is it advised to, to go live all around the world and not stay with one company your whole career? No. Is it, you know, and, and so on and so forth. But I don't judge the actions I take in life based on what society thinks is okay or what my parents told me is, you know, the best path forward. I judge each and every situation based on the merits of, you know, will how it ties into my goals and, and what I want out of life and stuff like that, which varies from person to person and what I'm passionate about, and what I like doing. And, and I create like a dream life for myself based on my own individual preferences, um, which I encourage everyone else to do as well. Right. I think that's how you can be truly fulfilled. So that's what I'm grateful to Nietzsche for is allowing me to rise above the defeatism of nihilism and the absurdism and embrace it fully and as he says, put your shoulder to the plow and destroy the old traditional values that come from religion and, and from your parents' upbringing. And, you know, you define how you're going to live your life and what you're going to do and what's going to make you happy and what your goal should be and all that. And that's a really freeing place because it's literally like a, a blank canvas. You're not, you're not constrained by all this fucking nonsense. Um, but read, you know, read his books, Beyond Good and Evil, about the slave morality from Christianity. Um, read Thus Spoke Zarathustra. You know, there's a lot of really good books. Um, but he he prophesied that like the greatest crisis in the modern day would be the fact that God is dead. Not the not not actually that like the actual God has died, but people are living as if there's no God, even if they're still like Christian or believing in God, a lot of people are living as if there's not because science has replaced God in a lot of ways. And then like the nothing has replaced science. And, and a lot of people are left with like this existential crisis in our modern day. So they turn to substances and, and other activities as the, to quote the Unabomber, surrogate activities. And the Unabomber is actually a pretty smart guy. I don't condone at all what he did, but he was trying to stop technological progression so that it didn't wipe out humans. I mean, he, he was like Harvard educated. He was actually a really smart guy. And he like wrote in his Unabomber manifesto, which I only know about because one of my friends told me, I didn't read it, but he said that like after the industrial and agricultural revolution, most of our food needs were met. Our survival needs, you know, were pretty easily met. And that was like our only purpose was to like make sure we had food and reproduce. And like now that's like taken care of by default, unless you're in an impoverished nation. And there's like nothing else for us to do really except for like these surrogate activities you know like everything else we do is basically like just occupying our time because <laughs> the primary purpose of being alive you know it's already done um yeah yep it's very sad and i, and I don't like the fucking cult shit and i especially don't like cults pushing like incorrect messages i don't like cults in general obviously but it's even worse when they're poisoning guys' minds. Um, it's meant for all levels. It's, it was meant to be a, the be-all, end-all product. I made Lee's Machine as a follow-on because I took my texting and, and Tinder messaging to a different ex to a new extreme. Um, but Platinum Dating System has everything comprehensively plus 64 hours of call time to help break through any and all issues occam's razor is do it yourself um just just say you're a music producer just say that you make music and link them to your soundcloud um cool good to hear um i'm gonna wrap up in a moment we gotta fucking make tiktoks before meetings uh let's see yeah that was part of the whole scandal with that fucking girl in japan um yeah i was in milan last summer when we were in europe a lot of fucking exotic looking people there um no they do not. Don't listen to Rolo and the other red pill dumbasses. Okay. Statistically, the amount of prom promiscuous women is very low. They're not meant to be like that biologically. They're, they're not, they don't want to be like that in practice. Yes, they exist, but they're like very low. I, I want to say it's like under 
statistically. And again, there's there can be problems with the statistics, but from my experience, they're not in general. Nine percent of women reported having more than fifteen sexual partners in their lifetime. There you go. And you might be thinking, oh, 15 is a lot. Okay, but not that many. Oh, here's a different study. 90% of women had 10 or fewer partners. They're just, like, I, I've met fuck tons of girls. I've met thousands of girls, and I've talked to a lot of them about this. And a lot of them are like between like five and 20 lays, but like a lot of them like stop at nine lay count. Like once they hit nine lay count, they don't want to conceptually go to double digits and they repeat guys from the past. But like, <laughs> which is interesting but like you know it's, don't listen to Rolo. They're, they're trying to make every girl out to be a huge thought and slut and all that stuff so they can demonize them so that you can hate them it's it's more poison at work he makes his rounds and everyone's fucking shows 40 lay count fucking old dumb fuck he's spouting poison everywhere um yeah his girlfriend looks like shit he calls her body a hard nine Myself and Anthony Johnson have both fucking shown that, that she looks fucking gross, like a two. Um, you know, but it sounds better on camera to say a hard nine. And he wasn't, that, that girl was a secret until she was blasted publicly. Anthony did it first, but. Um, <laughs> Todd Valentine. Yes, that's Todd V. Um uh, To escalate. A girl from her group, once you've gotten back home, just say, hey, I want to have a serious conversation with you real quick. Or say, um, I want to give you a tour of the house, go straight to the bedroom, and that's where the tour stops. Uh, let's see. No, I, I think all the religions are made up, personally. I don't think any of them make sense. Um. I used to call myself agnostic, which is just admitting that you don't know for sure if there's a God or not, because it's a metaphysical concept, but it's just a matter of like definition. I had a philosophy chair that said he called, we had the same exact views on religion that we don't, we actively didn't believe, but he calls himself atheist because he's non-theist. He's not actively believing in a deity, a, a magical guy in the sky. Um, so I, from that point forward, I started calling myself an atheist. An atheist is less socially acceptable. People assume that you must be evil or, you know, the devil has its holds in you or whatever. But, you know, most highly educated, you know, what's the statistic on like college professors or people that work in science that are atheists, like 90% or something like that. Most of the population is Christian. Um, let's keep going real quick. Uh, I'll be on tomorrow. Never done psych psychedelics, a bit scared that I'll freak out. <laughs> Interesting. I'm not even doing shrugs currently. When I had a trainer last year, I was doing shrugs a lot. And right? when you hold the dumbbells and fucking lift up, I'm doing uh, just military press, but that works that area as well. Um, okay. Uh, no, I do not. I've, I've had uh, lots of debates about this. Um, you know, that being said, if you look at like Grand Theft Auto, right, the video game as like a physics engine, people are walking around living their lives, all this shit, and it's all zeros and ones. So you could reduce everything that happens in the world into zero, zeros and ones or any other um, base, you know, that, you, that you'd want. I think everything can be represented in the world as mathematics and information processing. And if we knew the speed and velocity of every particle in the universe, you'd be able to predict all past and future states, in my view. Um, all right, I'm going to wrap up there on that note. I will see you guys on lives all week. Our challenge starts Friday. Highly recommend you join. Um, we had a couple thousand people on the last one. It will be live where I'm going over live. It's it's it's, it's beautiful. It's, it's like my life's work and cold approach being presented for 27 bucks, right? And, and there is no catch. The only catch and since we have so much value to offer, we're just literally teaching you my full cold approach system for 27 bucks, which is essentially free, so that you'll want to learn the rest of the system from me. After you massively level up extremely quickly in the cold approach area from this weekend's event, a lot of people want to learn texting from me. A lot of people want to learn online game optimization or how to run dates now that they're getting a lot of dates 
or how to close or how to keep the girls around they want. Um, yeah, it's really good. Like our team works really hard to put this together and it's, you know, it's just like us dumping value on you guys, um, for 27 bucks. So highly recommend it. Check out the link in the description. I'll catch you guys tomorrow. I'm going to go film TikToks, and this was fun. Oh, three more seconds. We got two hours. Boom, made it two hours. All right. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Everybody take care.